yes so welcome back to my channel and in this playlist which is basic genetic analysis i have made three videos regarding 16s rrna gene sequence and gene sequence analysis up to the last video uh, which is the construction of phylogenetic tree uh, in mega which is a step by step guide to construct the phylogenetic tree wherein i have showed you exactly how to construct the phylogenetic tree by taking an example of the sequence of my bacteria which is here the first one which is bacillus subtilis strain wbis1 and when i constructed the phylogenetic tree i have mentioned that i have used the sequences from atcc and all these other sequences which are used as a reference they are all taken from the type strains and again i have mentioned over there in my video that when I'm constructing the phylogenetic tree in the reference strains, what I have done is that I have taken all the sequences from the same genus but different species, except the outgroup which is Pseudomonas aerogenosa. Okay, but I have a question: is that at first place, why there is a need to construct a phylogenetic tree? Okay, and in continuation with this question, there is another question which says why choose type strains 16S rRNA gene sequence as a reference to construct phylogenetic tree. So there are these two questions that I want to answer over here. So let me begin with the sequence that I already have. So this is basically the sequence of my unknown bacteria. I took it. Uh, I extracted the DNA out of this bacteria, performed the PCR of 16S rRNA gene, sent the amplicons for sequencing and then I got this result. Okay. So once I get this result, what I generally do or what all the researchers across the world generally do is that they do pairwise sequence alignment by making the use of a blast tool. So I did the same thing. Uh, I just went to this uh, NCBI blast, chose the option which is a nucleotide blast and from the nucleotide blast. I pasted my sequence over here, press the button of blast and then I got the results which is there on this page. Now as you can see this is a very important part of this video and I got the result of blast what did I observe was that the sequence of my bacteria was showing the maximum similarity with bacillus subtilis. So here the genus is bacillus and the species is subtilis and it was showing 100% query coverage and 100% identity okay but as I went down the line it also showed me the 100% similarity with Bacillus valis mortis. Okay, so Bacillus valis mortis. So I have a question. Is my bacteria Bacillus subtilis or is my bacteria Bacillus valis mortis? Okay, so that is the first question. The second question that I have is that what is the credibility? I'm saying this again. What is the credibility of this Bacillus subtilis ST51? What is the guarantee that this is Bacillus subtilis and this is not Bacillus valis mortis? So that is the next question that I have. Okay. So one of the reason why we construct the phylogenetic tree is to eliminate such kind of questions. Okay. So let me give more detail about it. So phylogenetically i don't know where my sequence or where my bacteria stand in comparison to other strains of bacillus so that is another question that i have and to answer all this question we construct a phylogenetic tree okay and in order to construct the phylogenetic tree we need to have a reference sequence so let me give you give you an example so this is one of the research article which is coming from M. Spear, which is the journal from American Society of Microbiology. Now if we just scroll down, they have constructed the phylogenetic tree and their organism, the researchers organism on which the article is based is Bacillus chloris. Okay. And they have prepared the phylogenetic tree by making use of other sequences so all the organisms that you can see all the taxa that you can see with the help of the bacterial name are the type strains number one they all belong to the genus of bacillus but none of these species are getting repeated okay so i'm repeating none of the species from the same genera is repeating 
right so this is the ideal way to construct the phylogenetic tree now with the help of this tree what we can understand what we can understand we can understand that bacillus chloris is basically more identical to uh, this clad that you can see below it okay it is less similar to similar to bacillus lutei or bacillus mobilis why because they belong to the different clad okay so in order to construct the phylogenetic tree or in order to have more valid results they need to have the type strains why because the type strains the authenticity is more whereas when you are simply using these sequences directly from uh, ncbi or directly from gene bank which are not coming from the type strains then the authenticity reduces you don't know whether the sequence that you have taken is correct or not the author of the sequence who have submitted the data which you have taken as a reference how valid the uh, the sequence is you don't know okay so there might be a possibility that the author of this sequence uh, who has submitted this bacteria bacillus valis mortis okay i'm just giving an example this is not true but yeah M might have given the wrong nomenclature to this bacteria this might be bacillus subtilis or other way around i can also say that the other organism like bacillus subtilis may not be bacillus subtilis it can be bacillus valis mortis so there are two sides of a coin over here so in order to improve the authenticity generally researchers or the good researchers when they construct the phylogenetic tree they make use of the type strains okay and this is the major reason why the phylogenetic trees are constructed now let me take an example of another uh, research article so this is the research article uh, from international journal of systemic and evolutionary microbiology and in this article as well uh, the phylogenetic tree is shown and again in the phylogenetic tree now if you can see over here they have constructed the phylogenetic tree by making use of all the sequences from the same genus but different species no two species are getting repeated okay so i'm repeating this again so uh here with the help of this i can understand that okay fine this is bacillus subtilis uh, okay and this is also bacillus subtilis but the subspecies of both this are different so the entire bacillus subtilis subspecies are coming together in the same region okay and bacillus subtilis is quite dis distinct from bacillus lichiniformis okay so this is something that you can assume now let me take an example of my results as well so from blast i cannot i cannot give any prediction whether my sequence is it similar to bacillus subtilis that is true but how distinct it is from bacillus lichiniformis that i cannot predict from this result so in order to predict those kind of result what we need to do is we need to go and construct the phylogenetic tree that i will just show you okay so in this phylogenetic tree what we can understand is that my strain which is bacillus subtilis is coming just next to the next taxa which is bacillus subtilis atcc atcc strain means both these organisms are identical and bacillus subtilis is quite distinct from bacillus lichiniformis okay so this is how you have to predict and this is the reason why researchers make the phylogenetic tree now for example if you assume if i have given the wrong name suppose if i have submitted my sequence as bacillus lichiniformis okay and when i see this phylogenetic tree with my name coming as bacillus lichiniformis rather than bacillus subtilis i can directly predict that i have given the wrong naming to the bacteria so in order to overcome such limitations phylogenetic trees have been made and in order to make the phylogenetic tree a valid and authentic sequences of 16s rrna genes belonging to the type strains are chosen okay so i hope you like this video and subscribe to my channel and i will keep posting such kind of videos thank you for being till the end catch you guys into the next one